Good Morning Wilmington is powered by DART, Delaware's transit service, moving forward. Live proudly, boldly, and with peace of mind by advocating for your health with an early cancer screening. The LGBTQIA community is at higher risk of cancer, but screenings can detect cancer early when it's most treatable, giving you the power to live exactly as you are. Talk to your healthcare provider today. If you don't have insurance, talk to a nurse navigator to see if you qualify for free screenings. Good morning, Wilmington. What's going on? I'm your main man, Big Eye of the Talk of the Town, Mr. DETV, Mr. Positivity. And I'm here with my lovely, lovely co-host. Vincenza, and good morning, Wilmington, and good morning, Ivan. Oh, my God, what's oh, happening? It's so good to be back. Brand new season. I love okay. it. This is like, what, <laughs> season three for you? Yes. Um, yeah, season it three. Feels like, it feels like season three, but it feels like I, I feel like I'm a part of the family. You are I a part love, of the family. I love it. I love it. It feels so good to be back. Mm -hmm. And thank you for the break. No, Thank we you for the much that. needed break. Yeah. I, I know we all needed it. I needed it. And it was just a perfect time to reset. Yes. Refocus. And, and now we're back stronger than ever. That's right. And you know what the day is, right? What's today? Today <laughs> is a Mimosa Monday <laughs> of here on DETV. <laughs> Of course. And we have special mimosas here today, brought to you by Glow Chella. Come on, Glow. Come on, wearing that green, girl. God, what's happening, Glow? How are you? Oh my, well. Oh, oh my wow. gosh. Thank what we, you, Glow. What do we have here today? Today we have our lemon lavender mimosas. Okay. Lemon All right. lavender mimosa. So, this will be a first for me. Yeah. Okay. This will be a last. So, All right. we're gonna, cheers. You stay right there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because we're gonna tell about. It. We're gonna talk about it. Okay. <laughs> Oh my damn. Oh damn. Wow, that's delicious. All right, all right, can you stay that around for a little bit? so yeah. good. All right, so Glow, you stay around and maybe we can show the audience, mm. is Labor Day's coming up on what on how to make drinks for Labor Day. Is that cool? Mm. I would love it. All right, awesome, thank you, yes, Glow. thank you, thank you. All right, so special oh. guest in the, yeah, what, did, wow. it, did it hit you? Did it get you right there? <laughs> did it get you? It well, get you? I guess it's never, too early to start drinking a Someone, mimosa. Yo, it's 10 o'clock p.m. <laughs> somewhere. You know what I mean? This is this is good. Oh it? yeah, our moms are. <laughs> My mom is probably texting me now, talking about. I what are you doing? On air, you know. But My mom is probably like, Vincenza, your first show mm. back, and you're drinking. Oh my God, that's amazing. We're 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 cheering to a successful Good Morning Wilmington season mm -hmm. to the team and to continued success here. How about in health, wealth, and a brand new Wilmington? I love it. I and love speaking it. Speaking of mm. a brand new Wilmington, um, we have the mayor, Mike Przicki, in the mm -hmm. building right now. Oh, and yes. um, I can't wait to bring, when we go to the interview, to talk about all things Wilmington and the right. great things that Wilmington, that, that he and his administration right. and the citizens of Wilmington are doing here. So um, he's in the building. And I like how you said that. New Wilmington. Oh my God, think I about it. I love that. It's so true, it's so true. What's happening here in the city of Wilmington, right here in Wilmington, Delaware. I'm a, I'm a proud Delaware, Delawarean, born mm -hmm. and raised, and to see the revitalization of the community, the mm -hmm. city, yeah. it's inspiring, yep. it's needed, yes. and we love it. They said you could judge a city on its parking. Mm. We have like, <laughs> like, like th Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, Oh my gosh, I mean, between, look, we, we'll get into it. Between the restaurants and the museums and oh all yes, that, the we'll get into all that. Um, I love it, love current it. Current news, boom, this weekend, Let's, Jet Phoenix. We oh gotta talk yes. about Jet Phoenix. Dirty Popcorn Black Film Festival, hosted by Jet Phoenix and his crew. Mm -hmm. I was not able to attend, but I will tell you. You was there in spirit. I was, and I was following every bit of it via social media because I wanted to be there, yeah. and I know you were there, I and yep. I have to 
and Glow was there. I, yeah, and, and everybody it seemed like was there were so many influential people there. But yeah. congratulations Thank to you. your Trailblazer Award. Thank you. I, 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 I keep mean, it with I me. mean, so deserving. I keep it buckled and like, in the, like me and her rode together here. Like she was in the car seat, yeah. had a little, had a <laughs> seat belt on her. But, so deserving. But tell us about the event. The, okay. The event was so amazing, and what it was, it was a bunch of young creatives, young film, filmmakers, right, okay. black and brown filmmakers, mm -hmm. that um, showed up at the Delaware Art Museum. Shout out to Iz. Um, Iz is oh, doing a Iz great Bieto. thing. Uh, Iz Bieto. Iz Bieto is amazing. We love Iz around here. He's great. Yeah. And it was like a full circle moment, right, because you had a time where all these creatives came together to support mm -hmm. Jet, right, and what he's doing. But all these creators, at the same time, we all started together. Right. You know what I mean? So you had mm -hmm. the Jason Deville, as you had the Jet, you had myself. Um, and you had you had a lot of others. Um, and shout out to Oz. And shout out to Oz. Good man. man, good man. It was just beautiful to see everyone there, and and you know out of out of surprise, he gives me he you know he he goes into this speech about being a creative, okay. and then he goes and talks about me. And like he's, when he said that white van is like a white van, I was like, oh my god, I'm the only one that had the the missing <laughs> van, you know. But um, I love that. I love it was that. it was a moment. It was a lot. Of, it wasn't a dry eye in a, in a place. And um, I think what Jed is doing and what we can do creatively and for media, uh, and this is, this is the charge, that we are not competing anymore. Mm -hmm. The young creatives and, 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 and the old creatives are not, creating, are not competing anymore. We will come together to tell our narrative on the Wilmington and the Delaware that we know to, and strengthen our communities with media. And okay. everyone cheered on it, we agreed on it, and that's what we're gonna do. So I'm super excited right. about Jet and his future, and also the future of Wilmington mm -hmm. and black and brown people when it comes to media and us telling our stories. So I we're here, that. baby. I love we're it. Here. And it. It was the second annual second Dirty annual. Popcorn Black Film Festival. Last yes. year was the first um, event, mm -hmm. and I heard it was an absolute success. Yeah. And building up to this year, I mean, yeah. I feel like it was sold out. I was insane. Way, like weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, weeks ago it was yeah. sold out. So it, it was insane. It stay was... tuned for next year for the third annual Dirty Popcorn Film Festival hosted by Jet Phoenix because I'm sure everybody will want to go. They're, they're going to have to find a bigger venue. I, I believe so. But, mm -hmm. well, they can, they can actually, what Iz was saying, next year it might be held outside um, mm. and with, in the garden. So, oh, I love that idea. Yeah, and if you didn't get a chance, make sure that you check out Jet on the cover of Out and About magazine. Take a read, there's a lot of things going on. So deserving. Yes. This recognition is so deserving for him. He is one of the most hard work, hardest working individuals I, I know. He's been doing this for a long time. He's been grinding, he's been yeah. hustling, and he's been doing, he's been consistent. And I love yeah. that about Jet, he's consistent. And he stays relevant, and he's, he knows how to inspire, educate, but also stay, stay sharp. Yeah. And I love that he's so good at what he does. Very talented, mm -hmm. multifaceted, but super talented. Um, honored to know him. Yeah. And uh, honored to, well, he's been on the show before. Yeah, actually, was, a couple he, of times. He was on last week, okay. was, well, actually two weeks ago, with um, uh, uh, Freeway, Freedom Thinkers Foundation. Awesome. And Jet is showing the kids, it's a, a workforce development, program that uh, the Rapper Freeway is doing in combination with, in connection with the CEB and Jet Phoenix. Excellent. And they're showing kids how to, you know, make music, um, um, engineering, and, and, and actually we're gonna actually grab some of those kids here to intern with us after their program. Good. So again, we're changing the narrative, we're changing lives, we're changing mm. bloodstreams, but it's, it's just amazing. And, and so get a chance, check out Jet Phoenix, follow him on all social media. Right. Um, and also we were talking about um, Out and About Magazine. Mm -hmm. Out, and about, Out and About Magazine is definitely a sponsor to mm -hmm. what to do around Wilmington. So let's dip into that. We got the 50 oh, years yes. of hip hop coming to the Blue Rock Stadium. Which I want to go, can we go? I'm going. You already What's been invited. Date? What's the date? You've been invited to the barbecue. Okay, All so right. I want I want to be there because it's at the Blue Rock Stadium, which right. is already so much fun to be there. I mm -hmm. mean, just being at the riverfront, it's always so exciting. But to celebrate 50 years of hip hop, hosted by Grouchy Greg. Yes. I love Grouchy yes. Greg. He's been on the show too a couple of times. What's your favorite hip hop song? Ooh, okay. Come so on. I would have to say. It's better not say MC Hammer, man. Uh, <laughs> you better not. <laughs> I'm a, uh, I'm a huge fan of Missy Elliott, huge fan of Alicia mm -hmm. Keys, um, but going back to Missy Elliott because I grew up. What makes you dance, dance. when no one's watching? 
all of Missy Elliott's songs. Okay. All the ones with all the bad words, all, which all we will ones, not say. All the ones that you can use <laughs> in pageantry. No. <laughs> Not those, but I am a huge fan of Missy Elliott, so I'll okay. leave it at that because right. I have all of her albums. <laughs> love it, love it. But yeah, make sure you check out Out and About. Um, there's a couple of things going on in the community. Did you see DSU change their logo? Yes. So my brother Italo, everybody knows Italo. Everybody knows. Shout see, out to Italo. You always <laughs> preface that with that. Everybody knows I know Italo. Was, that was my brother Italo. He was, he was the one that attended an event at DSU, and when they announced or unveiled the new logo and he was sharing it with me and he right. loves it. Mm -hmm. He really loves it. He said that it's strong. Yes. Yeah. Actually that's the that's the word he used. It's it strong. It's strong. And that's that's perfect for yeah. D, for DSU. I love it. I love it. Being a, a mm -hmm. alum and a, mm -hmm. and a hornet, I love it. Oh, I saw it and it was just beautiful. Oh. Yes. Um, DSU is just come such Tony a long Allen's way. Tony Allen's doing a heck of a job he over is, there. And it, it, it stems it. from good leadership and he is doing a phenomenal job there, mm -hmm. really. Just to see the growth uh, at DSU, I love it. And plus, yeah. it's so good for the state of Delaware. Yeah. It really yeah. is. I also um, want to get in our own Tim Fontaine is in Atlanta, and he's going to share with us real, uh, real quick some great news that DETV is doing in ATL, and <laughs> he's going to bring us up on some entertainment stuff that's happening. Tim, what's happening? How are you, bro? You there? What's okay. up with your brother? Love you, man. Oh, yes. This one's for you, Tim. <laughs> we drink it. <laughs> so what's happening in ATL? I love it. Last time that um, Tim and I was in ATL about two weeks ago, and we were privileged, or I was privileged to watch Tim at work shooting a video with uh, Javon Devon, J Javon DeWall and uh, Jazzy Faye and Gas the Entertainer mm -hmm. called No Cap. Um, okay. And they actually performed on the Stellar Award, so that was a huge moment. Wow. And actually, we have our new Good Morning Wilmington theme song um, being created I mean, by those guys as well, so we can't wait that, for that to happen. But before we get into all that, um, Tim, Talk to us about entertainment. What's happening in the entertainment field? Because we heard there's a lot of stuff going on mm -hmm. on Netflix and all that stuff, and we know you're the guy to talk to. Right. Hey, look, let me explain something to you right now. Um, well, a quick little backstory. Well, I, I would take my 12-year-old daughter, Siani, right, mm -hmm. to scary movies because she loves scary movies. And when I get her there, she watches the movies, and normally she's not scared. Right. So, you know, they had the new vampire movie that came out. The last voyage to the... the how you pronounce it? The Detmer, the uh, Denimer? It, it doesn't even matter because we heard it was a flop. You know, and I, you know why it really doesn't matter? Because they said this was going to be the Barbie killer. What? It wasn't good at all. I mean, my 11, my 12 year old daughter watched it and she said, we could have watched Barbie again. Huh. That wasn't scary. <laughs> I, haven't, I, haven't seen, I haven't seen the movie. I haven't seen either movie yet. But no, neither. But I guess I have to go see Bar the Barbie movie I now. guess, uh, other than the did Vampire you, Wait, wait, movie. hold on a second, Tim. Did, did Maddie see the Barbie movie? No, Maddie went to New York to be a part of the Barbie experience. Oh, okay. And then after that went to be a Beyonce concert. <laughs> <Okay. concept. laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, get it right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they said that the, the Vampire movie was going to be the one that actually counterpunched and came right back against Barbie, but... It didn't happen, man. It was a huge flop. It was mm. a huge flop. A huge flop, unfortunately. So, what, what's going on Netflix, guys? Hey, I, I know you like the Netflix and chill. So I heard that. Um, what's his name? Jimmy. Jimmy. Um, the the. the football, yeah. The NFL. the NFL flop. I heard about that. Talk to me about that. Man, let me tell you. Great, great piece of uh, uh, documentary to watch, man. And it was on. I mean, you know the background. It was on you Netflix. In 20, look, in, 2020, in 2012, you know, he was like the hottest star in all sports at 20 years old. Right. 20 years old. Killing everything. Man, his trajectory was so high. But, 
I mean, mm. kids that are 20 years old, they're not ready. Mm. I saw the, I, I did see the documentary teaser, so the, um, right. and the trailer, excuse me, the trailer, and it was very engaging. Mm -hmm. I, I have not seen the documentary, but now I want to see it. So oh, I'm, yeah. I definitely will put yeah, yeah. it on my to-do list for a documentary that I want to watch because right. it does, yes, interesting, but to see this is a true story yeah. of a young, young kid yeah. go through success Right. And then it just, you're faced with so many challenges that you're not even prepared for, or maybe you don't have the right coaching. You don't have the right team behind you, mm -hmm. right? Because how many, when you take like LeBron, LeBron goes from high school straight to the league. His first job, he was a millionaire. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And with that, a lot of people, a lot of kids, a lot of, a lot of grown people, right. they, they don't have the financial um, uh, proudlessness, if you will, mm -hmm. to understand what is going on. So, right. I mean, can you imagine? Well, I have a question there. I even have a question there. Uh -huh. Everybody always say this. Is talent really your ticket? We say? Is, is talent really the ticket? Because mm -hmm. this guy, Johnny, he's a talent, talented guy. I'm talking he, he never studied film. He just went out there and played like he was playing on the streets. Right. And he upset everyone. So is talent just your ticket? I don't know, man. It's, it's, I don't think. Mm. I think talent can get you in the room, but hard work will keep you there. And your heart. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you're hey, definitely your passion and your heart. Yeah, talent's definitely. not enough now. Talent's mm -hmm. not enough. But I tell you, what is enough? These dad on mimosas. <laughs> I tell you that much. Woo! Tim, where's your mimosa? <laughs> well, I have, a, I have one right here. It's a, uh, it's a half mimosa and half uh, watermelon. He got prune, he got prune mimosas over there. It's good enough. Cheers. Yeah. Say, say, say one for me, if you will. I got hey, it. So how, so how does DETV ATL sound here? I love it. I love it because we're also going to launch DETV Miami Beach um, in, 20, in 2024. I want to be there. Oh, this is going to be amazing. Count me in. I'm telling you, D, Count yo, me in. We are, the whole objective with DETV <laughs> is to make people, make sure that content creators can uplift their community through positive media. Yes. We, there's enough negative stuff out here mm -hmm. showing us doing things, but now is the time that we can control the, the narrative yes. of our communities by building them from the inside out. Right. And like an awesome mayor said to me one time, Ivan, they need to see more people like you in front of and behind the camera. So, and that's what we're doing. I took that and we ran with it. I guess that's why you were, you were, you were given that Trailblazer Award then, sir. Congratulations. Well, it's a, right, it's a lot of, It's a lot going on. Congratulations on that. I see what I you did it. there. I appreciate <laughs> it. I appreciate it. So, even, when you, even when you was talking about, you know, uh, ha having a longer arm and, and uh, ATL and Miami, you know, I know that you flew out there and met with a whole bunch of creators out there and it just clicked in your head. And you say, you know what, we gotta, we gotta let people see more stuff, man. Yeah. More people, you know, doing, doing great things. Mm -hmm. It's a big world out here. And R kudos to you for doing that, bro. Thank so you so much. I'm excited about that. Treating some great content down here. I mean, there's so much going on down here. Everything with foods, entertainment, so much, so much. And I just feel honored to be able to bring that to you guys up there. My man, we Welcome appreciate back. you. We appreciate you. Harry back. I know your plane comes tonight, 930. Can't wait to get uh, you here. Um, Let's take a quick commercial break. Yes. All right, and then we're going to come back with everything Wilmington. And, and, and I, will, I can't wait to talk to the mayor because I got some stuff to ask him about the future and where we are mm, right now. So stay it. tuned. And remember, have a good morning, Wilmington. TV has been Delaware's premium provider of creative digital and broadcasting solutions that bridges communities and connects people. We create great stories for all audiences. We deliver independent news throughout Delaware. We are digital platform innovators. And we develop marketing and sales solutions so you can stay connected to your audience. Now, why do we do what we do here on DETV? We do it because we care. So, Keep watching and follow us on all of our social media platforms. Remember, DETV, online, on air, on time. Still searching for cheap gas prices? Dump the pump and ride DART. 
You can dart to your destination for only $4 all day. Let dart do the driving while you enjoy our free Wi-Fi available on all buses statewide. While scrolling through your favorite apps, don't forget to download Dart's free transit app for real-time bus information and enjoy the convenience of contactless fare payment through Dart Pass. So what are you waiting for? Dump the pump and try transit. Visit dartfirstdate.com or call 1-800-652-DART. Government doesn't make a move without an agenda, some type of plan. The problem is we haven't been on the agenda. Sometimes we're overlooked. Sometimes our interests aren't the interests of those in power. I'm your host, Kerwin Gaines, on DETV's new show, The Agenda. We're going to do our best to ensure that you, Delawareans, are knowledgeable about what's going on in the assembly. Federal government, local government, it doesn't matter. We're going to do our best to ensure that folks that make the agenda on a daily basis have to answer for it. Let them explain what they're doing. If it affects you, it's on the agenda. Welcome back to Good Morning Wilmington. It's your main man, Big Ive, and I'm here with... Vincenza. Uh, what do you think about this morning so far? I love it. Gosh, it's so good to be back. It's like riding a, a, a bicycle. Isn't yes, it? thank you. That's a perfect <laughs> example. It's like riding a bicycle. We just have to get warmed up and we're there, right where we left, you know, right where we picked up right where we left off. Right, and, talking about, and speaking about getting warmed up, mm -hmm. Delaware, Wilmington is just getting warmed up. We have Mike, the mayor, Mike Przicki here on the plaza, in the plaza, in the studio, to talk about us and tell us what's going on with Wilmington. Mayor, welcome. Welcome, Mayor. Hi, right, Vincenzo. How's everybody? Awesome, awesome, Wonderful. awesome. Good to be with you. Two terms in, Mayor, and there's been some significant changes in Wilmington. And as what I love to call it is the new Wilmington. <clears throat> yeah, I heard you say that. That's, uh, that's pretty good. I, um, I said to someone the other day, no objective observer of the city can't come through the city and not be impressed with all the changes right. in every in every aspect you know market street sure uh, great great eating spots you know up and down market street riverfront continuing to thrive but we have neighborhoods that are thriving you know we made huge investments in the east side of wilmington 20 million dollars of of uh, our own money not in that leverages of course private dollars on top of that amani village out in um, out in uh, the Northeast mm -hmm. by Riverside, mm -hmm. a fantastic project. Mm -hmm. uh, I went into a restaurant the other day and one of the fellows who was in there just happened to go up there and said, I, I couldn't believe it. It was just like this, it just popped out of the ground, this fantastic mm -hmm. community that nobody's aware of. Right. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many things here I find that parts of our city just don't know. Of. So huge numbers of people have never been in the 76ers field house huge right, right. most people i mean really most most people have never been to the, fi the pine box out on south street peninsula 140,000 square foot mm -hmm. sound stage that brings some of the biggest acts in the country yeah. here mm -hmm. to rehearse before they go out on the uh, on tour mm -hmm. uh it's it's really exciting uh, everywhere you look there's something going on and i think it's i think it's cultural so you talk about new wilmington it's tough to get people in, to invest if they don't believe in the future. But once they start to believe in the future, then the money starts coming in from everywhere. So everybody's familiar with Puccini Poland, who does tremendous amount of investment in the, in the city. But we have, we have investors building apartments from all over the, all over the region, yeah. uh, from Maryland, from New Jersey, from New York, bringing tens and tens of millions of dollars into the city. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what's happening the other thing I think that's happening is we have this kind of a cultural change. I always thought of Wilmington as being too corporate. It's been our success over the years, the DuPont Company, Hercules, all the big banks. Mm -hmm. But there was a downside to that, mm -hmm. and that was kind of stifling because they had that buttoned up corporate culture. Right. And I think it kind of stifled creativity. Mm -hmm. You know, you talked about creativity before. And now I get the sense that that is letting go. <clears throat> and so now we have the young creative classes. You talked about Jet Phoenix. I mean, Jet, a, he's a great member of this creative class that we've got in the city. Yeah. And he sees we're getting young kids uh, that are just being inspired by him where he wasn't there before. Right. And so you'd find that the dynamism of that, that organic growth that takes place in cities, that they don't take place out in the country. Right. They don't take place out in the suburbs. There's something gritty about the city that, that inspires people to reflect on, 
on humanity and the human condition, and that's what we love about the arts, and that's, I think mm -hmm. that's starting to happen more and more now. And yeah. you, you touched on it so well, Mayor, especially from the, not just the small business sector, but also the restaurant industry, coming, coming from <clears throat> someone who was born and raised in Delaware, right. third generation in the restaurant industry, has a restaurant in North Wilmington, and has seen the growth and the development. I love it. It's only helpful for all businesses. I believe that we can all su succeed together. Nobody yeah. wants to go to an empty place or empty community or empty yeah. shopping center, whatever it may be, wherever your business may be. But I, I love that there's so many businesses opening up and that's good for the economy, it's good for the community, it's good for the neighborhoods. So the more businesses that are opening up, it only betters the, uh, the whole community um, entirely. Yeah, we agree. So the th it's interesting how that happens. So people would say, you need these amenities so people will come live here. And I would argue that amenities only find, only follow when people are living there. So it's really hard to get people to say, let me put my restaurant and hope that somebody starts to live right. here. Mm -hmm. So what happened, and it's kind of our secret sauce right now because like everybody else, this work at home mentality and <laughs> almost I don't want to work mentality right. that happens, right? right? I mean, you've seen yeah. that. And yeah. you're, you've seen it in your business. So, um, so with fewer people working or fewer people uh, working in the city versus working at home, it impacts our wage tax. Mm -hmm. So what we've done, what has been, I call it our secret sauce, is we have people moving into the city in mm -hmm. great numbers. You know, all these apartment houses that are being built, they're all getting rented up. Yeah. You just mm -hmm. wonder where everybody comes from. Yeah. But you know, we've got people moving in, moving in, and they populate all of our restaurants and all of our you know, night spots. <clears throat> you know, they're, they really th they're thriving. Now, one thing that's not working so well is our, our lunch trade is, is less because of what I described before. Right. You don't have people in the offices. The great, the great, uh, one of the great aphorisms is that you know, the great constant in life is change. There's always, it's, things always change, and right, right now, We've got, to be, we've got to be able to pivot and respond to what the new world looks like. And exactly. you, can't, you can't curse the darkness. You've got you to gotta try to adapt to it. I still feel that it will change again. I really feel that people will start to go back and to they, the and offices they, and they, they should. they'll need a change. And I think it's healthy yeah. to change the work environment yeah, it, from it, your home environment, separate it. Yeah, I mean, I think after COVID, um, COVID played a huge part in creating new habits, right? right and that's for, correct, and for, yep. he, for people on a personal <coughs> level to people on, on, a, on a business level and working level. Mm -hmm. And with those new habits, you had a lot of people, like neighborhoods that were affected heavily by COVID. Mm -hmm. And with that $20 million plan that you, that you put back into the, the yeah. neighborhoods, can you talk a little bit about like what you did, what you and your administration did, yeah. and so, how you helped like the seniors <coughs> and, mm -hmm. and, um, and so on? Yeah, we, we did an outline the other day uh, basically saying, here's what we're doing over in the, uh, in, on the east side. I think it's about, this is off the top of my head mm -hmm. here, so it's about 80 new homes that we're building over there. Mm -hmm. uh, rehabbed another 130, mm -hmm. 40 homes. Uh, really, what was really, the, the, I think, the best one is mm -hmm. we, we've got 100-ish uh, homeowners who really had houses that were getting run down and right. we went in there and gave them grants to do oh wow uh, new windows doors roofs trim and wow. then if a lot of folks needed new heating systems here here's a new heater and we did it because these are longtime Wilmington residents who frankly just don't have the wherewithal to go out and spend 15 or twenty thousand dollars on improving their their mm -hmm. homes and right. so we did that and not only did we help them but we uplifted the general appearance of the whole place. Mm -hmm. The other thing we did this year, it's a, it's, and it wasn't, it wasn't with that $20 million, although, you know, I kind of ticked off a bunch of stuff we're doing with that. The east side's going to be the beneficiary of an, a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Governor Carney's spending uh, basically $100 million to build a new school new for school. the first time in 50 years. And that, that's, I hope that's going to be the, the Marty's Pritchard. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, well, uh, the governor wants it to be, so, yeah. you know, the, he, he'll get his way. But, um, there's so much money that's being spent over there to try to uplift this old storied community, yeah. you know, that's just suffered like so many poor communities, and they suffer from neglect. And the neglect, mm. I mean, there are a lot of people that are responsible for that. You know, yeah. we watched that happen. Every, everybody watched poverty unfold mm -hmm. and didn't do enough to, to yeah. kind of stem that. And so we have an opportunity to be able to really change things, given that we got some federal money. 
the Choice Neighborhoods grant was given to uh, Amani Village to reach Riverside, $50 million. Yeah. It's going to change that, that corner of the city. Yeah. And when so you, you start ticking off all these different little things that are going on and you start to see there is a, there is a dynamic that occurs and mm -hmm. that is if it's exciting there, maybe it can happen here and then maybe it can happen there. The trouble is when it's not working there, everybody kind of despairs that the city's just going to go down. Yeah. They just can't survive. And not today, under your, not on your watch. Right. I have to say, someone who's watched your mm -hmm. career as the mayor, you've been an exceptional leader for our community. I see you active. I see yeah. you present. <clears throat> I see you speaking on it. I've, it's been an honor to have you on the show. This is not your first or second time yeah. on Good Morning Wilmington. <clears throat> and just to see your continue action. Thank I mean, you. boots Thank on the ground, much. and that's yeah. what the city needs is a leader that continues to be present and mm -hmm. active and showing that we are making strides to be the new Wilmington. The new Wilmington. I love it. But I you also, it. also, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to piggyback off that, Vincenza. Mm -hmm. one, thing about, one thing about the mayor not just being a, a great leader and a great representation of what, we sh what we're doing, um, he really cares. Yes. Like the, I, I have plenty of conversations with him offline that he's trying to understand a, a population of people, mm -hmm. right? And like <clears throat> when you when he says neglect, I lived over, I grew up over South Bridge, lived over East Side for years, for many many moons. Right. Neighborhoods have been neglected, and when they talked about um, the mayor the fir his first term, you know, all he all he thing he gives a heck about is the waterfront, the waterfront. Second term, he came like, yo, I'm gonna drop a certain amount of million here in Eden Park. I'm gonna drop this over here at West Center City. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna drop this over here. So when you and now here comes Monty Village. Now when you look at this collectively on what it's doing to not just seniors or people that lived in this community, now we have the community of kids mm -hmm. that are growing up, mm -hmm. that are having the the having a chance. Right. You know, with STEM and 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 um, the Teen Warehouse and and everything that's going on. So it's a privilege to watch change in front of you, right? It's a privilege to watch. And like even I had I told the mayor. And when we was up at the, at the desk, I said, the mayor said to me, hey, Ivan, you know how this thing works? Is if they see you, keep people like you, people like Jet. And the, and the mayor gave me a, a grant to do workforce development. And like those cameras over there, those boxes, you paid for that. So we were able to give the students that mm -hmm. participated in our, work, our, our workforce development come learn um, broadcasting, like in Delaware, kids can learn broadcasting. That's a big deal. That through, was never, never yeah. available, even my years. Yeah, and being School there. years, I, I always wanted to pursue a career in broadcast journalism. Those resources, yeah. just the experience, the ability, the tools, nothing yes. was here. And, now, and what it, now is, it is, is you have kids that look like me, that come from the same neighborhood, and we're giving them cameras. And we're not giving them guns. The streets are not giving them guns. We're giving them cameras, and we're teaching them ethics and the responsibility behind it. Mm -hmm. So maybe one day, I'm not even going to say maybe, one day they will be going back out into the community like they're doing now and say, these are the stories that we're telling. Right. And that's because of visionaries, right? No, that's because of leaders like you and your office and, 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 and the is this people. A, is this a campaign commercial? Uh, no, no, it's not. It's just, it's just the things that I see. <laughs> Listen, you know, we're about to give you your flowers. Yeah, we, yeah, that's all it is. We're just giving your flowers. We're acknowledging <laughs> it because yeah. we see it and you are listening. Yeah. And I think that's, yeah, the, that's, that's the most important thing. We can go to commercial thing. after you that. I'm listening. Drop the mic. We'll be right back with Glow and Glow Show. No, 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 Mayor. This is not a campaign commercial. This is just yeah. something that we've seen and, and that I've seen personally yeah, being it. being born and raised over South Bridge where people forgot, mm -hmm. right? Where, where money would ride by in a car and then go somewhere else and put it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But now that these are like, when you get older, you start to, myself, start to realize how impactful a community, uh, people can make, a, make an impact within a community. Right. And white, black, indifferent, doesn't matter. It's all about impact. And these are the impacts that like mm -hmm. we see with, and, and I definitely want to hop on this, the amphitheater, yes. right? How about that? How about that? I mean, that's freaking genius. Yeah, let's talk about that. That came out, and I want to say, it came out of nowhere, right? And, and I love Tina Betts and, and, yeah. and Ray go over there. <clears throat> and just to watch that amphitheater, like what, what do you think about that? So I think it, um, you know, it's emblematic of what what the respect we have for the east side of Wilmington, for example, those forgotten neighborhoods yeah. that we put, well, I don't know what we wound up spending, but it's a lot of millions. <laughs> I mean, there were millions, millions yeah. and millions to get 
Not, well, the, it was the, the first part where this, we converted the old horse stables mm -hmm. into artists' uh, facilities, yeah. you know, and, uh, and we're going to want to air condition them as well. But they're beautiful. And then you've got the bike projects right there, and that's a beautiful Urban piece. Urban bike project. Yes. Right next door. And then, of course, you just had this big scrubby piece of ground behind it, and then Tina, Tina Betts came to me and said, here's what I want to do, and mm -hmm. showed me these drawings. And, mm -hmm. You know, it turned out to be grander than I ever expected, and yeah. hats off to her. Yeah. And, it, you know, if I'll take any credit at all, it's just that I have faith in my people and say, if you believe in it, and mm -hmm. I, I have faith that you're going to do a good job, and it, she did. So it was for those, remarkable. Yeah. So for those that don't know, where is the amphitheater? Yeah, right down okay. the bottom of Walnut at 16th. It's right Walnut down. And, and it's, you know, you kind of, you can drive right by it if yeah. you don't crane your, your neck and look. But And, and so people... A lot of elected officials would say to me, oh, yeah, I know where it is. Well, they had never seen it. And yeah. so when they walked in there the other night, we had a nice party for our electeds and, and 250 members of the community. Mm. And great, great entertainment, the yeah. best sound system uh, in the city is all, so good. All different types of music. You yeah. Can, one night you can hear Every R&B, the next something. night you can hear bluegrass. You know, and people, what I love about it is um, how people that never been on that part of town because they heard... But yeah. 2012 murder capital of the world, right? Mm -hmm. But now you have people from Holchester coming down in a community that they've never been in and saying, oh, this is beautiful. While I'm here, I might as well go down Market Street and check one of the restaurants out. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's... You said something I just want to make sure everybody understands. We have the lowest, lowest violent crime numbers that we've had Talk to in over 15 years. Mm. One year in the last 20 was just slightly lower than ours. We're doing... We've got a great police department, people really working hard. Mm -hmm. We've got people out in the communities working to be violence interrupters, yeah. modeled after a program in Newark, New Jersey, where I grew up, and we went up to see what they're doing, and mm -hmm. the police love it. Police yeah. say, I think it's working. So, and, yeah. and, and also, I, I wanna touch on, again, a great things that's going on that people don't know about, the idea from Ashley Christopher that was brought to you, and you was like, girl, go ahead and run with it. Same, and it was HBCU same. week. HBCU week. You know we're what I mean? going. You're talking about Atlanta. We're going down to Atlanta. We're going to the, the city of Moorhouse and Spelman and mm -hmm. teaching them about HBCU. Come on, Come on right? Yeah. Like, like, like little Wilmington, L Delaware. We teach in there. We were little, down. We little. went down, <laughs> and we went down to Florida. <clears throat> we went down to, down to uh, Disney World. Said, show Disney. Yeah. Here's how you do HBCU week. Yeah. You know? mm. So, Ashley's got it. We got it going. We took. They're, they're all right. Again, in 2012. The um, Delaware was called Murder Capital. 2014. In 2014? Yeah. yeah, 2014. I started in 2014. <laughs> and now in 2023, <clears throat> welcome to the new Wilmington. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And you can't beat that. Yeah. Um, Mayor, thanks Thank again, you. man. Great being with you. Thank you. Thanks, being with, thanks for coming. Yes, All right, for more information yeah. that's going on in the city, make sure you go to the city's website at... WilmingtonDE.gov. <laughs> See how I did that? Right. <laughs> Got to include everybody. That's all right. Thank you. <laughs> all right. We'll be right back after this message because Labor Day is coming up. And mm -hmm. I know you look Where at you. Where did that mimosa go? Yeah. yeah look. I, I know <laughs> everybody We're going to take a quick learn. commercial break so we can go grab the mimosas. Yeah. But don't go anywhere because Glow Glow Shout out. the mixologist Ooh. is here to mix up some drinks for you. We'll be right back. How did the ETV start and how did you get here? The ETV started approximately 10 years ago in the basement of my home. I had an idea to show people of color doing great things, but what happened was I got to the point that I said, I'm gonna just show people all together doing great things. The motto and the, the, the moral was to bring people together instead of using media to rip people apart. And doing that, you know, I just did a lot of hard work, a lot of free stuff, a lot of things of just showing people being themselves. I figured that media, and I saw that media wasn't doing that, so I just decided just to give it a shot not knowing that it would bring me to where I am today. I had a, a great, great journey doing it. Met some amazing people, did some amazing things, worked on some amazing projects. You know, and with just a lot of hard work and a bunch of sacrifice, I'm here today. I done worked on everyone's campaign in the state of Delaware. And now, you know, 
I'm just doing what I do and doing it with friends. My biggest accomplishment right now would have to be, it would have to be this, hands down, without a doubt. We want to make sure that we inform the community wholeheartedly. So again, they can, they can have all the information that they need. For more information, you can find us at DETVCH.com. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Twitter and Facebook under DETV. Be sure to check us out. Tell me what you think. has been Delaware's premium provider of creative digital and broadcasting solutions that bridges communities and connects people. We create great stories for all audiences. We deliver independent news throughout Delaware. We are digital platform innovators. And we develop marketing and sales solutions so you can stay connected to your audience. Now, why do we do what we do here on DETV? We do it because we care. So. Keep watching and follow us on all of our social media platforms. Remember, DETV, online, on air, on time. Still searching for cheap gas prices? Dump the pump and ride Dart. You can Dart to your destination for only $4 all day. Let Dart do the driving while you enjoy our free Wi-Fi available on all buses statewide. While scrolling through your favorite apps, don't forget to download Dart's free transit app for real-time bus information and enjoy the convenience of contactless fare payment through Dart Pass. So what are you waiting for? Dump the pump and try transit. Visit dartfirstdate.com or call 1-800-652-DART. Government doesn't make a move without an agenda, some type of plan. The problem is we haven't been on the agenda. Sometimes we're overlooked. Sometimes our interests aren't the interests of those in power. I'm your host, Kerwin Gaines, on DETV's new show, The Agenda. We're going to do our best to ensure that you, Delawareans, are knowledgeable about what's going on in the assembly. Federal government, local government, it doesn't matter. We're gonna do our best to ensure that folks that make the agenda on a daily basis have to answer for it. Let them explain what they're doing. If it affects you, it's on the agenda. All right, welcome back to Good Morning Wilmington. The show keeps getting better and better as always. Oh boy, yes, it, is. it is Mimosa Monday at its finest and what better way to have a certified mixologist on set to show us how to mix up some really special, really, really creative cocktails. Yes. We have Glow Dean Scott, also known as Glow, here on the plaza. Welcome, Glow. Welcome, Hello. Glow. How are you? Good All morning, right. everyone. Good morning. Okay, Labor Day's around the corner. Yes. People at home trying to swear they they bartenders, right? <laughs> oh. Yes. All right. So what you got for us today, Glow? So today we're going to do a quick and easy strawberry margarita recipe. Okay. Okay. So we're going to start with about an ounce or so of strawberry puree mix. Okay. We're going to throw that in our shaker. Then we're going to double down if you're feeling super generous. We can do super two. Generous. Yes, super, super generous. generous. If you're okay. feeling super generous, we can do roughly about two ounces of tequila. Okay. Um, oh, does it matter what type of tequila you put in there? It does not matter. Um, Blanco tequila mixes very well, but okay. if you feel like getting a little extra happy during the holidays, reposado or añejo always helps as well. What's your favorite? Um, if I am taking shots, which I don't, okay. but if I am, um, I'll do reposado. But okay. if I'm okay. doing mixed drinks, then um, more than likely I'll do blanco. Okay. It just they mixes say, better. They say tequila is very good for you. It no, is. Really? Yes. Okay. Especially I'm sure there's some antioxidants yes. or mm -hmm. something in there. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So we have our tequila okay. and um, we want to give it a little extra zhuzh, so we'll add zhuzh. a little bit of Grand Maillet. Glow that has her zhuzh. own vocabulary. <laughs> I use that word too, I love zhuzh. that word. A little okay. bit of extra zhuzh. So since I am going to be making um, margaritas for the both of you, okay. we'll add an, another two ounces. Won't he do it? <laughs> they say it's dangerous to mix <laughs> drinks, right? Mix yeah. alcohol, so we're having the champagne. Allegedly. Allegedly. Okay. <laughs> Allegedly, right. I trust you. That's Kool-Aid. <laughs> right, right. 
<laughs> um, so then we're going to add a little bit of sour mix. Um, there are people that aren't big fans of sour mix. Okay. So if you are one of those people, margarita mix is also a great substitute. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So. And Glow, you also have a, have something coming up in September. I do. So I have a, we can call it a nice little street festival coming up um, on September 9th at the Queen. It's called Glowchella. Okay. Um, the name. <laughs> definitely be a fun fill event. Lots of games, prizes, giveaways, drinks. music, drinks. Right. <laughs> drinks upon drinks upon oh, drinks. So it's um, definitely going to be a fun time. Really looking forward to it. Something different that, okay. you know, Wilmington hasn't seen in a while. Yeah. And you're so, known, you're known like throughout the East Coast for being a mixologist. I have a small following. Oh, the humbleness, yes, This yes. lemon lavender <laughs> mimosa says, yes. just says everything that you, you know, definitely have a following. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I, you know, I'm just always about mixing flavors and tastes that people okay. normally wouldn't mm -hmm. think to do at home. Okay. Um, so how I started, well, it actually started as a bet. Like my friends bet me that I wasn't nice enough to be a bartender. Oh, wow. <laughs> and oh. that was in 2009. Okay. And I'm still going. You're still going. I, I'm threatening to retire every day, but it never, it oh, never, right. it never works. All right. So back to our margaritas. Now what I personally like to do when I make margaritas, just to give it a little extra kick, I like to add a little bit of lemonade to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, no, no, but. no, Glow. Don't give everybody everything, okay? <laughs> okay. We're just showing our people how to make quick stuff at home. Okay. You know what I mean? I don't want to mess up your profit <laughs> margin. Ivan, you know what I mean? Ivan, really what goes into it is the person making it. Exactly. Okay. So okay. It's a, you can have the same recipe. This is just standard in the industry, whether it's food or drink. Okay. You can give the same recipe to 10 different people. It will come out 10 different ways. Exactly. All right. It's the person making it and their heart okay. goes into and it. Right. A drink is just a drink until I make it. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. So we're going to put a little ice in here uh -huh. just to give it a little chill. And who wants to do the honors of the shaky shaky? Let, 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 let the Vietnam Bistro Madame do it. <laughs> is it, is it, is it. Is it safe? Yes, it's safe. So we're going to do a little shaky Someone shaky. take a picture. That's it right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Awesome. Keep going. Tell me when. When. And you always know when, when your shaker starts to get that l little film of frost on it. Okay. Oh, you're going to have me at home shaking everything. No. <laughs> no, you don't need to shake everything. <laughs> no. So we're gonna gonna act like I know what I'm doing. That looks good. Thank you. Oh, damn. And then we're just going to top it off with a little bit of lemonade. A splash of lemonade. Just a splash. Just need oh, a little boy. September 9th at the Queen. Make sure you go and get your tickets. Okay. And, and while we're I should have had a, I should have had a bigger where breakfast. They, <laughs> where can I get tickets, Glow? <laughs> um, you can go to my Instagram page, tiddly.turtle, and the links for the tickets are in my bio on Eventbrite. Oh my damn! <laughs> oh wow! I said damn. Mm. Mom, oh, that's good. that is really good. That is good. I have to admit, I'm not a big oh, wow. margarita drinker. Yeah. But this goes down so nicely. It's, it's strong enough and balance. sweet enough. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. not. Yes. It doesn't have like a bite or it doesn't hit you in the back yeah. <laughs> of your neck. And rob you and. <laughs> <No. laughs> right. However, it's dangerous. It is good. Because this yeah. is the one the that it creeps up on you. <laughs> everything's great, everything's great all of a sudden. <laughs> like, how much? One more round for the guys. <laughs> so this if very we refreshing. have a little bit more time, I would like to show everyone how to make a quick go, go. lavender lemon Girl, go ahead. This we is on, dangerous. We, we own the network. Go ahead. Do okay. what you do. This is dangerous. All right. So first. Now what is this? Lavender what? This is a lavender lemon mimosa. Okay. The one we drank. Yes, okay. so okay. I try not to do the traditional, you know, champagne, orange juice, anyone can do that. So we'll try something different today. Okay. Okay. So we're going to do a little scooch of Grand Maillet. Glow cat. I mean, glow cat. <laughs> glow cat. <laughs> and we have our <laughs> lavender lemon syrup. So okay. we're just going to do a little dollop of that. You don't need too much because mm -hmm. it's a syrup and it's thick. You don't want your drink to be too mm -hmm. thick at the end. Okay. Now. If you're feeling super adventurous, you can add some tequila. Ooh, you want the tequila. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And then we top it off with some Prosecco. So this is a spiked mimosa. It is very much this spiked. This is not your traditional mimosa. This is yeah. a spiked mimosa. I'm over mimosa. here, I'm still on this. It's a glow-mosa. glow, -mosa. glow -mosa. <laughs> I love it, I love it. So out of all the cocktails you, you, you showed us, what has been the most popular one that you like to make or most requested? 
So I am very much known for my Long Islands. Um, I I'm so do... glad you did not make that. I'm, so, I'm mad that you didn't make it. <laughs> no! <laughs> so. Do you realize that those are dangerous? Yes. <laughs> um, again, I don't do your traditional, you know, sour mix, Coke, or anything like that. I like to play around with the flavors. Okay. So one of my most popular ones is the watermelon mint. I also mm. do strawberry mango. Oh, that um, there was a period of time where banana apple was very, no. yeah, and people got nervous about it because they were like, oh, banana, that's nasty. But again, a drink is a drink until I make it. Okay, so <laughs> where are you going to be? So like this weekend, are you going to, where, where are you at? Because I'm trying to find I, that, I, I'm <laughs> trying to find that Long Island. I'm trying to find you in that Long yeah, right, Island. Right, right, right. <laughs> I'm actually not anywhere this weekend. I am ears deep in planning Glochella okay, okay. I know, I understand. To, make, to make sure that it's perfect. But I do take personal requests. Like there are a lot of times people reach out to me and say, hey, I'm having a girl's night, I'm having a baby shower, I'm having Good. a divorce a party, idea. a wedding, a whatever. Party. A divorce parties are a thing. She got a drink um, called Screw Him. <laughs> 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 well, it's funny you say that because I did um, a, father, a Father's Day function and one of my specialty drinks I named it, that's just my baby daddy. So I like to like play around with the names and the flavors yeah. and, and things fun. like that and have yeah, fun. Nice. Yeah, you gotta have fun. I love it, I love it. So I have to ask, yeah. espresso martinis are a thing. I blame I, TikTok. I, are we blaming TikTok? I blame TikTok because for the resurgence so of funny. espresso martinis. It's been around forever. And yeah. tequila sunrises. Okay. I blame mm. TikTok for that as well. Or do you do TikTok? Do you make um, videos for TikTok? You know I'm old. I don't. But I, <laughs> I reach Age out to my... Age is just a number, Glow. I reach out to my nieces and nephews okay. to help me with stuff like that. But I haven't delved into the world of okay. TikTok as of yet. No worries. This right here. And you know what's so crazy about this drink? The lemon was right on top, so you first you get the lemon. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you get like the rest of it, and it's very you have flavorful. To layer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm so scared to. <laughs> I'm afraid I want to drop. Um, okay. I'm not a big drinker. I'm hey. not a big drinker. However, I, I appreciate. <laughs> You're I appreciate a good cocktail. Yeah. yeah. And I can tell that you put a lot of love, and passion I into do. your signature cocktails. And many people don't understand the difference between a bartender and a mixologist. Yes. And I always like to explain the difference. There's nothing wrong with either. Both are just no, absolutely know, hard working, not. talented, yeah. and very good at their craft. But a absolutely. mixologist really just takes it up a, a notch or two. Yes. And the fact that you, you, you touch on the little ingredients and how you really dive into it even more. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't even get into it, but I'm sure you specialize in garnishes. Yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's touch on that a little bit more. Um, Maybe a garnish so, suggestion for the lemon lavender. So with the lemon lavender, a good garnish suggestion would be a fresh strawberry. Okay. Or I am very big on dehydrated fruit. That's mm -hmm. one of my okay. um, signature garnishes when I bartend. Um, during the summertime, I'm also a fan of edible flowers. Okay. Mm -hmm. As garnishment. Mm -hmm. um, edibles. I was like, oh, <laughs> this, this, this done turned into a whole oh another my drink. God. A whole other thing. I mean, I'm going to book her tonight. It, it must be the tequila. <laughs> it is. Look, I'm going over here. All right. You go ahead and finish up with Glow. Glow, cheers. Cheers. Oh, my God. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I'm a big fan of edible flowers, and I like to play around with garnishments as well. Like, you know, one day I may do um, a dehydrated pineapple, or mm. I may do like dehydrated blood oranges, or I may do fresh oranges. It really all depends on the mood and the type of event that okay. I'm um, that I'm bartending. But to go back to what you said about the different layers, that really matters in the cocktail, Absolutely. like the small things and trial and error. My drinks weren't always good. So it took a lot of trial and error, a lot of playing around with different flavors, um, textures, and things like that until you know I really felt confident and got things right and hit the ground running. Well, Glow, I have a, I have a great question for you. You mm -hmm. said it earlier how at first you, you did not nail the drinks. You know, yeah. you took some time, trial and error, right? Yeah, absolutely. So let's maybe you're talking to an aspiring mixologist mm -hmm. that wants to pursue a career in mixology or maybe as a side hustle yeah, or yeah. a full-time job because you can do either or if you like. And that's the beauty of Absolutely. mixology yes. bartending. Exactly. Uh, what piece of advice would you give an aspiring mixologist? Um, I would say definitely don't give up. Um, mm -hmm. Keep trying. When mm -hmm. I started out, what I would do is I would invite mm -hmm. my friends over. Okay. So I would like make the drinks, I would put them on flashcards, and then they would get to try all of them. And on the back of the flashcards, they would tell me what they liked, what they didn't like. Mm -hmm. And then I would go back and make the necessary adjustments. 
Um, I don't gatekeep. So anyone that you know wants any type of resource information, training, anything like that, I am more than happy um, to assist in that manner. But definitely just keep trying till you get it right. Don't give up. Don't be afraid to be creative um, right. when it comes to you know your recipes. You you definitely don't have to go by the norm. Right, right. Yeah. I, uh, I have a secret okay. to, t to share with you, and I don't even know if Ivan knows. Ivan, are you paying attention? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm actually a certified mixologist myself. Awesome. I went to school, I took classes, uh -huh. because I own a, and operate a restaurant, okay. and we, we started a bar. And, I, and what's the best way to learn is to learn yeah. how to... you have to be in the field. Exactly, be exactly. in the field, roll up your sleeves and learn. Exactly. And I have such an appreciation now Mm -hmm. Now that I know with my education, with my knowledge, I have such an appreciation and a level of respect yeah. for bartenders and mixologists. It's a lot of work that goes into oh, yes. it. You know, people think it's just, you know, you come, you show up to work, you get behind the bar, and then now there's a lot of preparation that goes <laughs> We're over here having a serious conversation and... <laughs> I got you covered. There's oh, a lot okay. of preparation that goes into it, a lot of setup, a lot of breakdown, dealing yes. with a lot of different personalities. Exactly. And you have to, you know, be thick skinned and you have to learn how to take that constructive criticism. There have been times when people have sent my drinks back and you know, I don't I don't take it personal, I don't get offended mm. by it. Hey, what could I have done differently? What didn't you like? What did you like? If I can remake it, and if not, I'll make you something totally different. Excellent. Just always being willing to learn, and um, you know, not being offended by the criticism that may come along. Excellent with it. advice, yep. really. That and it's so true because if you take it personal, yeah, it will defeat you, and it, it'll stunt and your growth. Oh yes, yes. yeah, oh, it will yes. definitely stunt I your growth. I can tell that you put your whole heart into your cocktails. I do. I can tell. Just <laughs> it's your thing. It really yeah. is. Yeah. And it is. Yeah. I think that if I'm ever hosting a party, I would love to call you. So Please do. Speak. So let's find out how can we reach you. Do you have your social media or yeah, any way people can hire you for um, a private party or event? Sure. So I do have Instagram for my company and it is tiddly.turtle. It's T-I-D-D-L-Y dot turtle. Um, and my email address is tiddlyturtle at gmail.com. You can always mm -hmm. reach out. Um, regarding public or private events, get quotes for what you need, or any you know advice on mixology or bartending. Thanks. Excellent! This yeah. is so great. Yeah, this, uh, this, this is, is a, awesome. This is a heck of a way to bring it back, right? I the show love back, right? This. We, we we like to bring back Good Morning Wilmington in style. Yes. Right. That's for sure. Right. And we Glow. brought it back. Glow. 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 We're bringing you back again. Awesome! Yes, I, I, I would love to be to. back. This is this is such a great idea, and I think that we feature different cocktails every time. Absolutely. Because okay. It, I mean, Mimosa Monday is a thing now here on Good yeah. Morning Wilmington. Yeah. So we're going to keep right, elevating. We should, drink, we should drink. We're going to toast on the way out. Okay. All right. Um, yes. One more time before we go out. That's your camera right there. Yeah. Tell them about the event and where yes. they can sign up and all mm -hmm. that good stuff. So Glowchella, September 9th at the Queen Wilmington. You can go on my Instagram page, tiddly.turtle, and click the link to purchase tickets. Excellent. All right. Excellent. <sighs> Thank you for watching. Thank you. <laughs> I, had, I, had to, I had to pause for a minute. <laughs> Thank you for watching. And this is for you, Wilmington. Thank you. Thank Cheers. You. Salute. Cheers. Salute. 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 Totally from the east side of, of uh, Italy. <laughs> South side. South side. <laughs>